Well, hello, Elsa Sroka. Here we are looking into your new-ish studio. You've been in there for, what, a year, two years? Um, Actually, I've been in this studio for probably maybe going on three. Wow. I know. You know what? Don't you think like COVID is a weird, like COVID is this mishmash of years. It's like the calendar was just thrown up in a, you know, and it jumbled back. Like, I don't have a real concept sometimes of when it's a COVID. No, I know. I mean, it's true. I think our world's got so discombobulated. I mean, it's like we let go of things and then we kind of came back to things and we were sort of non-existent and then trying to get back into it. I know I'm, I feel that way too. Yeah. 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 But you know, the older you get, I think, you know, it's true. Time flies. (laughs) Well, you know what? That is true too. Right. And well, Mm -hmm. and like when your kids leave the nest too, it's like Mm -hmm. a different kind of time, you know, because I think time was ordered by school cycles and now it's like, yeah. Yeah. Right. For sure. And, you know, also on that note, being an artist, um, because it's not a nine to five every day job, like scheduled, I really lose track of time because, you know, I'll, I come into my studio, I try to come into my studio five days a week, let's say, but some days you wake up and well, I wake up and I'm just not feeling it. And that might be a day that I don't come into my studio and it could be you know, Monday, Monday through Friday, but then I'll work inspired on a Sunday or oh. whatever day of the week. And so, you know, I go by what I feel like rather than this like regulated schedule. And, um, and then you really do lose track of time. Like yeah, what is do. today? Does it really matter? No, not in my world. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> no. Yeah. Cause the deadlines are just going to sit there. Right. Right. But yeah. Yes, it's true. And I, and I kind of trick myself sometimes I have to say this helps where I will come in. Well, I will pretend I'm going to my studio here to paint. Um, Even if I'm not in the mood. And then I just say to myself, you know what, I don't have to paint. I don't have to do anything. It's like, it takes a lot of pressure off me just to say, I'm just going to go. And I'm just going to like, sit and you know not even get into my paint clothes and then I'll pick up a brush and do a little few things and the next thing that you know I'm doing more and then I'm like okay this is a painting day but if it ends up not being whatever I don't I really have learned to not force myself and it it's better that's probably a, a healthier way and I would think the paintings would feel better yeah yeah. It's true without this like pressure of, you know, and that, that's something that I really noticed um, in the last year or so that I'm taking more time to just sit quiet and, mm-hmm. and not think as much about what I'm doing because for a while there is like, okay, I really got to figure out what I'm doing and why I'm painting when I'm painting. And, um, and now just saying to myself just don't think just go in there and enjoy what you're doing really like the when I started painting it was sort of this like I don't even know what I'm doing this just feels right and so I'm really trying to get back to this place of you know not having any of those voices in my head Mm -hmm. you know it's it's a yeah, right. So it's an interesting place, I would think, and and this place that you are in your career, this stage where you are, that you know you you have this toolbox of of skills that you've really mastered and are you know or are close to mastering, and so you could paint anything you want. And so the key, I would think, and this is why I'm not an artist, but, you know, to actually allow those things that are percolating in your mind to come to the front so that you, you create them with a sense of, um, I would think authenticity. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and also just, um, 
you know, with not really being aware, it's like it becomes more in instinctual, intuitive. And I think, you know, that's a place a lot of artists want to, that's our happy place when we are doing something uh, that we don't even remember doing. And you're in the zone and you're painting yeah. and you're, and you step back and don't even know how you did it. So that's, mm. yeah, it's, it's kind of this meditative um, state. And it's really interesting. It's, it's great. But actually it's able to get there. It just sounds actually really healthy and kind of refreshing too. Mm -hmm. Because you do, I mean, at also at this point where you are, you have a lot of commitments, right? I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, galleries and shows and. Right, right. You know. Yeah, it's, it's true. And, and um, the distractions of just life and, you know, taking care of, you know, elderly parent, and that's been heavy in my life lately. And, wow. um, you know, you've got kids stuff still, even though they're grown. Mm -hmm. grown. Yeah. Um, that never goes away. And so thank God it never goes uh, away though. <laughs> Well, yes. Yes and no, right? Yes like, no. you know, you got to let them be free and you hope that they're able to be completely independent. But um, yeah. yeah, it's nice to have them back around too. Yeah. But yeah, so there's a challenge sometimes of um, being in my, in my head, in my painting world. So I, you know, definitely have had that going on, I have to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's kind of interesting too. I, I've been having this conversation a lot or, or listening into like, there's, it's this, it's this conversation about women in the arts and balancing out and, you know, how underrepresented women are in the arts and, you know, and as you're talking about kids and I mean, I definitely know I would never do it. I would never miss out on, you know, having children for me personally. Right. Mm -hmm. But it does when you have kids and you're the mom, it does like, you don't go full bore at, I think kind of anything in life, um, you know? And so now for me and for you having essentially a freedom, like we've launched our children into the world, even though, you know, they still need us and thank God they still come home and like I'm going to go pick up one of my sons at the airport tomorrow. And I've never been happier to make an airport run, you know, <laughs> I get to see him. Yeah. Right. But I mean, I think there is that thing of now you have this space and you have this wonderful studio um, and you have the demands on you, but you can really explore. And, and I want to, talk about that as we talk about this new work that we're going to get from you for the gallery 1261 show contemporary realism now um and i'd love to chat about where these images are coming from and and kind of this exploration that you're doing because i always feel like every time i open new work from you it's a new exploration so mm -hmm. i'm going to do a screen share and um, and let's take a look at some of this new work. I'm so excited to see this. So, um, okay, and I asked you before we um, recorded what the titles were of these paintings. <laughs> and they're not titled yet. Um, mm -mm. No, they're not. I'm still tweaking a few things in these. Um, so, uh, I mean, they're, they're close to being done, but like today I was just, I was, there's fresh paint on here still. Um, so anyway, of course, this is typical in the animal in sort of this, like, right, this home setting, mm -hmm. sofa, whatever. Yeah. But I, I was like, okay, you know what? I have not painted a cow in a really beautiful bed. And um, I mean, really, I think it's almost like, you know, my pet, my dog. And yeah. um, I, I tried to think about what it is about these animals and these 
in my paintings. And I really think it's occurred to me that I think they're my emotional support animals. Hmm. And, you know, it's like my life gets crazy with like, again, like I said, the responsibilities and worries of different things in my family and people in my life. And I'm one of these people that I guess I'm a worrier and overthink all this. And so when I'm with animals, regardless, not just painting it, but when I have animals around me, I forget everything. You know, I'm just like right in it with the animal and um, present. And is and it so, the same with the actual animal or painting the animal at your present? I think I'm just calm painting the animal. You know, it's like in real life with that animal, I'm very present. Um, and people kind of go away. Mm -hmm. Everything goes away because all my focus is on this creature. Mm -hmm. And when I'm painting them, I... I mean, it's amazing that I put the amount of time into, you know, the the details and the the expression in these animals. And I feel like I really need to get that right um, because, I don't know, it has some emotional impact on me. And I think it is. It, it, it makes me feel calm and they're so unjudging. That's just animals. And, you know, they're not people. And I... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> people are stressful and animals aren't yeah I mean really simple as that and and also I um love interiors I um very often go through imaging every day of you know different online things I have of decorations and decor and furniture and I just love it. To me, it's like this beautiful other art. And so this is sort of, you know, a combination of the interiors and the colors and the spaces and then bringing that animal in. Mm -hmm. So it's everything I really love. Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting as you're saying all those things and I'm looking at this cow, first of all, with its face to the sun and just you know how wonderful is that you know even as a human to just be face in the sun and you know calming and then this beautiful green room and you know and these colors that are so wonderful together so harmonious together it is just tranquil yeah. I can see how this would mm -hmm. bring your blood pressure down yeah. And I, you know, I, I've heard that from people that my work, you know, makes them smile, makes them feel relaxed, makes, you know, and it's not really, I don't, I don't, um, paint with that thought in mind. Like today I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do a not new composition of something that makes me feel, feel relaxed. Yeah. It's just what happens. Yeah. Yeah. So did this new photo pop in for you as well? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. And this one, this one is not quite finished. Just, you know, just FYI, these are close. <laughs> um, but anyway, again, this is like this beautiful piece of furniture that um, I love and um, the animal that I love and putting them th together with this, again, this setting that you know, it, it pulls me in and also these are, you know, sort of like, let your imagination go. Yeah. I, for me, art is more interesting when, you know, it's not so literal. So these, yes, they are representative, but, but I hope there's a place of like, you know, a creative mind can make up whatever they see. You know, it, there's something about it that it they, your paintings are satisfying in that way, that they're absurdist in a sense, right? I mean, you know, every so often you see somebody who has a, a, a pig in their home or a, a calf in their home or a miniature horse or something. And okay, you're like, that's just crazy. 
um, but also kind of piques your imagination, like, huh, how big would a miniature horse be in my home? You know, <laughs> like how mm-hmm. funny would that be? Mm-hmm. Um, but then again, it is, I, I don't know, maybe speaking for myself, I do kind of go down that path of, oh, that is just so refreshing. One, in a humorous way, but two, also in this just like, you can t- take a little breath, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And maybe not everybody, you know, feels that way with animals, of course, but um but I hope that it also just feels like, um, you know, harmoni- harmonious painting and interesting brush strokes. And um, that's really what I'm right. trying to capture as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and they are, and they really are. Um, let me pull this one in. Um and this one is, you do these just studies often too. Talk I've, I've done, thing. yeah. Um, or know, I don't mean to familiar call with it. my art, a lot of the cow heads and stuff and in the past. And um, I just thought, you know, it's been a while that I've done them. And so I just wanted to do another. And I think, you know, this has um a lot of brush strokes that I that I like that are just spontaneous and quick and um you know without a lot of fussing and that's what I I would like to be doing more in my art oh um it you know like put them down leave them come over it um and I guess I don't always do that because I do smear around stuff and some like the cow in the bed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And the other one. But um just these more bold streaks of color and um like that one's more atmospheric. If you look up close, there are some bold parts um with brush strokes, but there's a lot that are really like almost melded together colors that make them real soft. You know, when, um, when you, okay, when I was in your studio and this has been a while, um, but I remember that you would kind of make these collages of you'd cut out different Mm -hmm. things and, you know, it was, it was just this fun way of visualizing stuff. And I hear so many artists are like, well, I put it, you know, into Photoshop and I mess around with it there, but you were actually old school and, and cut images out. Are you still doing that or have you? Yes, I am. And, you know, there's some, of course, I love that sort of tactile way of doing it. And I guess too, there's sort of this crudeness to it that, you know, if you're putting something in Photoshop, you're getting it all perfect. And, um, Mm -hmm. I, of course, Photoshop is also learning these skills. I, to me it's like this huge learning curve maybe I would like it but I kind of feel like it's kind of a good thing I don't use it because again my work has a different feel than of of I don't know if crude is the right word but I don't really want my art ever to become like so perfect matter of fact I would like it to progress as more um, abstraction as I go interesting yeah let's talk about this one um and this painting you have had hanging around the studio for a while Mm -hmm. and I think this is interesting because it's really evolved I remember seeing this gosh I've seen it in several stages yeah, you've seen it in my studio for a while. I have had it for a while. And um, I've always really liked it and the composition and the sort of simple simplicity of it. But um, I had I had a, a leg off to the side and because in my cut and paste way of do, doing things, I was cutting the legs off, making them longer. And then I kind of set it to the side right on that, the, the line, um, 
to the right of the front leg. And I said, okay, that's kind of cool. And then I, I think people just didn't know what to do with that. Like, what is this leg doing there? Anyway, um, but I, but I've always loved this piece. So I, um, extended the legs with the hoofs now because the hoofs weren't on there before and then I've added the flowers and the butterfly and um, the flowers I painted on there really loose and again thick brush full of paint and not overthinking of mm -hmm. of what I was doing and again it was sitting in my studio um, well as as it had been and it was just one moment I thought you know what now I'm I'm just I'm just going to paint this on here and hmm. just let it do its thing. And, um, you know, somewhere in my mind, I knew I was going to be putting those flowers on there, but, you know, just like, what, what do I have to lose? It's paint, you know, put it on there, quit thinking about it and yeah, <laughs> let it go. And it is whatever it is and, you know, rework it again. And this is what I love doing is I want to, be more spontaneous again like that I think it kind of was and then I got a little worried about stuff and tighter and then there's so much freedom and so much fun in painting more spontaneous another thing I picked up oil sticks that are really cool and you know oh. I don't know Rose do you know are you yeah. with us? oh yeah. yeah and I love them because those are you know pure intense color that you throw down you can they're compatible with all the oil regular oil yeah and I really enjoyed that and it made me so happy to have another way of doing something because I kind of feel like I need to keep reinventing or keeping myself excited about something else I'm trying yeah it so are you any of these paintings that have oil stick on them or are you working some brand new paintings? um the one in the bed has a little, but then it's not, I kind of, you know, then reworked it with some other oil. It's not as marked up as real oil stick marks are. Yeah. I have another painting in here that is the school of fish that um, I've had um, for a couple of, boy, probably three years on the wall oh. on a um, what? canvas. And it's so cool because I don't, I don't care. It's not for any show. And so I was like, painting with regular oils and then I got the oil sticks and marking them up and moving things around and it's so great especially if I'm in a place in my head where I'm working on something like this for a show and I'm trying to get myself in the mood let's say I just mm -hmm. go to these fish and just play and play with these sticks and move the paint around and change it and there's so it's just like I don't know this I am finding this is something I really need yeah it sounds like it mm -hmm. play is, a, is, play is an important part isn't it of what of is play? play oh my god yes yes nice yes for sure okay well, I yeah. want to paint for me and yeah. I will share with others but <laughs> number it's... one is painting for me yeah I mean, I, I, it's important for me to remember uh, why I paint, because it makes me happy. Well, and I think it changes everything when you are completely wrapped up in making it for an audience. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then it also compromises, like if you were to do, if you had to take on a commission too, it would, I think it would kind of tie your hands a little bit. Mm -hmm. And those are hard for me because I, I do get to, uh, and a lot of artists find them hard because we get in our head about it. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, a perfect world, we would just want to paint with no shows. And then when we're ready and we yeah. have our body of work, we'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you're ready for our body of work and it just pops <laughs> right in on the walls. You yeah. know, I remember um, something else I wanted to chat with you about is that you have a very rich dream life. Mm -hmm. Do these, do some of these paintings come to you in the, my dreams? Um, not maybe literally, but um, I, 
I love, love going to sleep so I can like see my dreams. And um, wow. I'm super entertained by them. And um, I love sleeping. And so anyway, maybe, you know, my work sort of is sort of dreamlike because of how much I appreciate that weird state of your mind yeah. when things aren't really real they're kind of real and um you know you're just like what what was going on yeah. um I don't know but yeah certainly I I I do love dreaming and um do you okay so did yeah. you did, how how do you remember your dreams I mean I remember some of them when I'm waking but mm -hmm. I don't remember like, I know there are dreams I go back to often. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny. I don't really go back to my dreams often, but when I'm having a dream, let's say I wake up and in the middle of the night and, and if it was a good dream, I'm kind of upset. I woke up because I'm like, oh my God, I want to finish this dream so I can put myself back into it. Mm -hmm. um, and, but you're right. It's hard to remember when um it's the middle of the night thing you really have to write them down because I think you're right it's the stuff that right when you wake up is the stuff you remember yeah so I'm not remembering everything yeah um but they're pleasant maybe. enough that <laughs> I mean maybe that would make um maybe that would make the uh, some of our problems as a society of getting enough sleep <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't wait to go dream you know I know right and it's really healthy I mean not too much sleep but yeah a lot of people are very sleep deprived and you know they know it's like it shortens your life too right consistently sleep deprived but yeah, yeah I, I am a bit obsessed with like I need to get this many hours a night <laughs> wow. but I'm also one of the people that doesn't function well on five hours and there are those people that are okay not me. No. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I like, I like my seven to eight hours mm -hmm. uninterrupted. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. what is on the, what's coming up next for you? Um, well, I've for different shows and different. Yeah. Just next year. On. Um, well, the gallery is really begging for more work, of course. And I know that's, I am a bit of a slow painter. And so I'm definitely going to be a part of different shows probably for that. They're not um, set in stone yet. And then I have a friend that has this amazing house in the Hamptons and um, they would like a, a commission. And um, um, speaking of, they've been very, very patient. I know. And they would like a commission that doesn't really include cows um, cool. because the house doesn't really, I mean, that's not really their world. Yeah. And, and I see that. And so that's something that I might be working on here in the next year or so coming up for, with plans for that. I love it. Oh yeah. gosh. Oh gosh. Oh, they're giving you free reign. Mm-hmm. Oh. Which is actually pretty difficult though. You know, I mean, it's like the, you know, total trust in what I do and subject, but not cow. So, but, you know, then, you know, you, you want to make sure this is something that they are going to enjoy. And it also has this place in the house. It's right when you walk in the front door of this. And they have a very mid-century, oh my God, a house that would be, you know, on in inside um, Architectural Digest. So it's, it's very, very beautiful. <laughs> so there's a little bit of pressure, but she's a very good friend too. So oh, that's good. Um, yeah. It sounds like a, it sounds like they need a cow. I don't know. That's just me. <laughs> <laughs> Elsa, this has been wonderful. I really appreciate you taking the time and I'm really looking forward to seeing these in person. Um, you're going to be in Contemporary Realism now, which is our January show at Gallery 1261. Um, and since you are local, I'm going to already commit to the, uh, fact that you're going to be there for the opening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> yes. I'm very excited. 
Good. I'm excited too. I'm excited too. And we're already having magazines contact us for images and all that good stuff. So yeah, it's, it awesome. sounds like, yeah, I think it's a really fun take on artists in this region mm -hmm. and how, you know, you know, I was just, um, I was just listening to a collector talk about, you know, he collects artists deceased now, but of Colorado and who've had an impact um, in this state and in this region. And, and he was saying, you know, when people call art regional, that's a put down, you hmm. know? And, and so um, it, it's to say, well, it's, you know, it's just regional, it's not worth collecting, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. you know, all art is regional. And he was really emphasizing sure. that point that wherever the artist is, that's what they're painting. Right. Right. You know? That makes total sense. Yeah. So what I love about the two shows we're doing, naturalism and contemporary realism, is that, yeah, this is really important. This is how artists are responding today in their own way and their, mm -hmm. through their lens. So I'm, I'm thrilled. I know the show is going to be really dynamic and That's we're great. looking forward to opening and we're going to do um, panel discussion about contemporary realism in the West. And so lots of good stuff coming up. Awesome. Yeah. So you have the first, the first opening at 1261 um, next month. Is that yeah. It? December. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Natural. Right. And it's like, okay, what month is this? <laughs> I know. Yeah. Right. Okay. Back to having no, no real schedule. Yeah. 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 I love it. Well, Elsa, thank you so much. And thanks for letting us take a peek into your studio. I really appreciate it. And mm -hmm. looking forward to getting my hands on these pieces. It's going to be wonderful. So I'm excited about them. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And be well. Happy Thanksgiving. And I will see you probably in December. Great. Okay. Bye. Take Rose. care. Bye.